Hey Vision Tracers, this is Dr. Bird here with another social studies lesson for you today. Today we're going to discuss the battle between President Andrew Johnson and the radical Republicans in Congress during a period in the United States known as Reconstruction, which was, which was after the Civil War. When Lincoln was assassinated, it caused a lot of drama throughout the United States. Some of the major issues were how were the southern states going to be readmitted back into the Union and who was going to pay for the loss of thousands of lives and all of the other mess that came with the Civil War. Lincoln had a plan of leniency towards the southerners because he wanted to bring them back into the Union as quickly as possible. His Vice President Andrew Johnson favored this plan as well. However, it can be argued that Andrew Johnson was a bit confused and very stubborn in his ways. And so he would battle with the radical Republicans during Reconstruction. And this would cause a lot of uncertainty in the country as to how Reconstruction was going to be managed. Now, although Andrew Johnson wanted the union to remain in place, Andrew Johnson was a slave owner from Tennessee. Lincoln chose Johnson in order to pacify those southern states and try to get them to agree to stop the fighting. Johnson was quickly sworn in after Lincoln's assassination. Now, many southern states agreed to Johnson's terms for readmission to the Union because, again, these were very lenient terms. They even created new state governments and elected people to serve in Congress. Now, this is an important point that these southern states, they would start a whole new uh, government within their states and they would elect people to serve in Washington, D.C. Don't forget that point because that's going to be very important down the road. As a result, many of these new southern state governments would pass what were called black codes. Now, these, the purpose of these black codes were to place freedmen into a position of less than white people. And it was almost like slavery in many ways. Johnson's reconstruction also included many pardons to rebel leaders. He also gave them their land back, which really restored their power in the South. So the people who were in charge of the South before the Civil War were now back in power. The separation of powers within the Constitution would bring Johnson's Reconstruction to a halt. As members of the legislative branch came back from break, they realized what Johnson was doing and they decided to put a stop to it. So once again, the, the Republican Congress decided that Johnson's plan did not go far enough to fully punish those individuals responsible for the Civil War and also make sure that freemen's rights were protected in the South. As a result, the members of Congress refused to accept the newly elected congressmen from the Southern states. Alexander Stevens from Georgia was one of these newly elected congressmen. Now, again, when he went to D.C., he was refused to be seated. Now, the interesting thing about him was that he was actually the vice president of the Confederacy. The radical Republicans also strongly believed that freedmen in the South should be treated equally. The Republicans were able to compromise with Johnson, or so it seemed, and the Congress passed two laws designed to help freedmen. The first law extended the Freedmen's Bureau. Now, the Freedmen's Bureau was designed to help freedmen get back on their feet after the Civil War. And then the second law was a civil rights bill designed to put a stop to the black codes that were being passed in the South. Now, these two bills would have become law with only a signature from the president. Now, President Johnson is on record as saying that the South should be managed by the white man alone. And this angered many of the Republicans in Congress because they strongly believe that the freedmen should be treated equally. But actually, President Johnson's actions they actually harmed the freedmen. He vetoed the two bills that he actually agreed to sign into law. As President Johnson went back on his word, news of civil rights violations in the South towards freedmen were being reported in the North. The Republicans in Congress, they put their heads together and they came up with an idea to combat what President Johnson was doing. And that idea was the 14th Amendment. Now, the purpose of the 14th Amendment was to give citizenship to freedmen and also guarantee them equal protection under the law. Now, once again, Andrew Johnson, he was not a fan of this. 
And during the 1866 election, he would go around the country speaking out against the Republicans in Congress and speaking out against the passage of the 14th Amendment. The Republicans in Congress, the radical Republicans in Congress would strike back with their own reconstruction of 1867. Now what this did was it split the South up into five military districts. So the military was in charge of the South and the military would remain there until each of those states would ratify the 14th Amendment. Additionally, Confederate leaders could not vote until their states ratified the 14th Amendment. And on the flip side, the freedmen were able to vote as a result of the Reconstruction Act of 1867. Now, the Republicans in Congress knew that Andrew Johnson was going to try to interfere and disrupt military reconstruction. So they passed a number of laws to limit his power in this matter. And one of those laws was the Tenure of Office Act. Now, the purpose of this law was to prevent the president from dismissing members of his cabinet who actually agreed with the Congress on Reconstruction. And so naturally, this would upset President Johnson, and he was a fighter until the end. He would issue orders to the military in order to undermine military Reconstruction. He also fired military leaders for enforcing these laws. Now, lastly, he would violate the Tenure of Office Act by firing his Secretary of War. Now, this would get him in big trouble. The House impeached Johnson for this action. Now, the definition of impeach is to formally accuse an elected official. Next, a trial was held in the Senate to determine his guilt and removal from office. A two-thirds majority vote was needed to remove him from office. In the end, President Johnson was only one vote away from being removed from office. But after his impeachment, President Johnson was left a weak political leader and reconstruction would continue with very little re resistance from him as he served out the rest of his term. So even though the fighting of the Civil War had stopped, there was still another battle to be fought over reconstruction. What would it look like and who was going to lead it? And again, that battle was fought between President Andrew Johnson and the radical Republicans of Congress. Well, please feel free to download the worksheet that goes along with this video. Also, please feel free to check the Vision Chasers website for other tips and tools to help you as you chase your vision of success. Well, until we meet again, I'm Dr. Bird. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. And this will cause a lot of uncertainty in the country as to what, as to and one of those laws were the Tenure of Office Act. Now, the his vice president, Andrew Johnson. Now, although, although Andrew Johnson, now the Congress, now the Congress knew. So even though the United States stay, stays together eventually, 